Hello and welcome back to another video of the Brainy Heart. In this video, we will be looking at one of the two major cortices of the frontal lobe. And this cortex is the motor cortex. So let's get right into it. The motor cortex is this area over here and it can be break broken down into three different parts. This red area is the primary motor cortex. This purple area is the supplement supplementary motor area. And finally, this blue area is the pre-motor cortex. So those were the three main regions of the motor cortex. Now the primary motor cortex, so the, pri the motor cortex as a whole is located in front of the central sulcus and if you have watched my intro to the landmarks of the brain videos you might remember that anterior to the central sulcus is the precentral gyrus and that is exactly what we have here the precentral gyrus is actually the primary motor cortex and then the area anterior to the Pre-central gyrus would be the supplementary motor area and the premotor cortex. But just remember that this whole thing together is called the motor cortex. So as the name suggests, the motor cortex, as the name suggests, the motor cortex basically controls the motor activities of your body. The motor cortex actually has a map of the whole body, basically, in it. So what I mean when I say that the motor cortex has a map of the body is that when you take the coronal plane of the motor cortex, you will get something like this. And what you're looking at is the coronal plane of the motor cortex of the left hemisphere. And this would be mirrored on the right hemisphere. So as you might already know, the motor cortex has a lot of neurons. And the motor cortex basically sends the information to the body part through the neurons. The neurons are basically like the messengers. And depending on where the neuron is, that neuron might innervate something specific. So if there is a neuron over here, that neuron is going to be innervating the parts that help you swallow. And the neurons in this area will help you innervate your tongue. And this area will innervate your jaw. The neurons in this area will innervate your lip. And basically, depending on the location of the neurons, they innervate a different body part. And that is what I meant when I said that the motor cortex basically has a map of the body part. And that's basically how the neurons are positioned and organized. And fun fact, if you didn't already know this, since this is the left hemisphere, it actually controls everything on the right side. So these neurons are going to be innervating the right side of your jaw, the right half of your face, the right eyelid and eyeball, the right eyebrow, your right hand, and your right leg. And your right hemisphere is going to be innervating the left side of your body. And this happens because of a process called decussation, which we will talk about later in this video. Now that you know that specific neurons positioned in specific locations innervate specific body parts, the neurons will travel down either of these two tracks, the corticospinal tract or the corticobulbar tract. When the neurons get the information from the motor cortex on what to do, they travel down either the corticospinal tract or the corticobulbar tract. So neurons traveling down the corticospinal tract, as the name suggests, travel down to the spinal cord. And from the spinal cord, they go to your hands, legs, abdomen, etc. And the corticobulbar tract carries the neurons to the brainstem then from the brainstem, it goes to your head, neck, and face. And the reason why the left hemisphere 
innervates the right side of your body and the right hemisphere innervates the left side of your body is because of a process called decussation. So decussation happens near the spinal cord brainstem area. Let's say this is your spinal cord brainstem area over here. Neurons from the right side of the brain are coming in and neurons from the left side of the brain are coming in as well. I'm not really sure why it does this, but the neurons on the the neurons coming from the left hemisphere cross over and down into the right side of the spinal cord. And the same thing happens to the neurons coming in from the right side of the brain. So they come over and then they cross over and then they go into the left side of the spinal cord. So now you have the neurons from the left hemisphere on the right side of the spinal cord and then now you have now you also have the neurons from the right hemisphere in the left side of the spinal cord. And then from the spinal cord they branch off depending on where which body part they're innervating. The neurons from the left hemisphere, which are now on the right side of the spinal cord, branch off depending on whichever body part they're going to be innervating. And if you want to learn more about how the neurons leave the spinal cord and go to a specific body part, check out my video about the spinal cord, which I'll link, put a link to in the description below and up top over here. Now, your motor cortex is not always right with its decisions. Your cerebellum is what makes your actions refined and smooth. So, if you want to learn more about how your cerebellum changes the decisions of the motor cortex, check out my video about the cerebellum, which I'll link below in the description as well and up top over here. And that was the two major paths that the neurons take. Now going back to the diagram over here, the left one, I haven't talked about the supplementary motor area and the premotor cortex. The supplementary motor cortex is said to be involved with the ex execution of the sequences of mo movements and the attainment of motor skills and also the selection of movements based on the incoming sensory information from the sensory cortex, which is located somewhere right next to the motor cortex in the post-central gyrus and in the parietal lobe. The premotor cortex, which is this blue area over here, basically contributes about 30% of the neurons that enter the corticospinal tract, but it seems to be active during the planning of rather than the execution of the movements. And the primary motor cortex obviously is going to be where the action happens, where all the inputs from the supplementary and premotor cortex come in and the primary motor cortex sends out these neurons either to the brainstem where it goes to the head, neck and face or to your spinal cord where it goes to whatever body part it's aiming for. As we already talked about, the motor cortex takes care of all the activities, all the motor activities of the body. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're playing soccer and you're about to score a goal. You get right very close to the goal and then it's time for you to kick the ball into the goal. So what happens is that the sensory information from your eyes and ears come in telling the brain that you're right next to the goal, you have to kick the ball so that it goes in. And then the sensory information is taken in by the motor cortex. And then the, the supplementary motor area and premotor cortex start planning and deciding on what to do. And then they send over the plan to the primary motor cortex. And then you're, depending on what part of the body you want to enter, your motor cortex wants to enter weight that neuron is going to be able to do so. So if you're going to kick, it's probably going to be your neurons in the leg area. So all the neurons are going to get fired up and they are going to be sent down the corticospinal tract and then to your 
right leg, if since this is the left hemisphere, and if you're a lefty, then your right hemisphere would do the work. And calculations of the motor cortex is probably not fully accurate, so you might have a chance at missing the goal. So that's when the cerebellum comes into play, and the cerebellum is in this picture as well, it's right there. And it's going to sense everything and make your activity more smooth. So then the cerebellum is going to go back to send information back to the primary motor cortex. And then the primary motor cortex will send more neurons to the leg. And then that's how you're going to get, get a goal. And that's one of the billions and trillions of examples of the motor cortex doing its job. So that was the overview of the motor cortex. That was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned from it. I'm always open to comments, questions, and or suggestions. Also, stay tuned for another video about a different cortex in the frontal lobe, which will be the prefrontal cortex. So stay tuned for that video. And this is the Brainy Heart signing off. I'll catch you later in the next video.